Hey everyone, Simon and Alex here with Top Tennis Training and in this lesson we're going to reveal a simple slice serve cheat. Now the slice serve is one of the most effective in the game on both your first and your second serve so it's important we master it if we're serious about winning matches. The slice serve is effective for three reasons. One, you can get the opponent out of position by hitting an angle. Therefore, it creates a lot more space to hit into on your next shot. Two, it moves through the air and off the bounce. So it skids off the court and the curve you get through the air makes it extremely difficult to read and return, especially on fast courts. And three, it's very useful on second serves because it gives you a way to take off pace. You could still swing through the ball and hit it with full racket speed, but the ball will not travel fast through the air. The slice, the rotation on the ball, will bring that ball across and down and take some of that speed out of the shot. Therefore, it's a more safer option rather than hitting a flat serve where you're going to have to slow down your racket head in order to make it. With a slice, it gives you a sure way to go for your serves, makes it difficult for your opponent to return, and also creates that angle so that you can hit into the open space on your next shot. It's a win-win situation. Now, before we go any deeper into this lesson, we want to try something new. We want to get you guys involved in our lessons. All you have to do is send us your best slice serves. We're going to rate them, and we're going to put the best slice serves on our next video. Now, in order to do this, you have to be a member of our YouTube channel. Just click the Join button, under the video, join us, and then send in your video to our email address, which we'll leave in the comments below. Now the first step in producing a good slice serve is using the correct grip, and that is the continental grip. This is the same grip that we hit our flat and our kick serves with. This grip will ensure that you have the correct angle and will actually allow you to hit the side and the top of the ball to produce that slice. If you're using a forehand grip, let's say the eastern forehand, it's very hard to carve around the outside of that ball because of the grip. You'll have to put your wrist in a very unnatural position. But with the continental grip, we can have that supination into the pronation and this will allow you to actually slice that ball. If you're serious about improving all aspects of your game, then make sure that you have subscribed to the channel. Now press the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future lessons from us. Now it helps to be quite loose with your hand, you don't want to grip your racket too hard where now you're going to have to produce all of the racket speed through your shoulder and arm. You want to be quite loose with it, you want to tense with your, so you squeeze with the, 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 the bottom two fingers while squeezing you're going up and allowing that racket head to travel up and forward through the shot. So trying to be as loose as possible because looseness creates speed of racket, creates slice and creates that dip that you'll need to bring that ball down for a wide serve. Now keep watching because later in the video we'll give you the perfect drill to work on that slice serve so you can use it in your matches. Now a lot of players wonder if they should pronate fully on that slice serve. Now with the flat serve we're pronating a lot more prior to contact. So I'm supinated and I'm pronating and then full pronation happens with the racket face after I make contact. We want to be making contact with our strings facing towards our target. So as I'm going up to the ball, I'm leading with the edge of the racket. So my wrist is in that supinated position, my forearm. As I lead up to the ball now, I start to pronate. And then for that flat serve, my strings will very much be flat towards that target. But with the slice serve, I want to make sure that I'm hitting the side of the ball and the top edge. So if we imagine this ball to be a clock, I'd be going for one or two o'clock. This will ensure that I have that ball dipping because if I hit the ball at three o'clock, the ball will have a lot of slice, but it will sell wide or sell long. So hitting the ball around one or two o'clock will ensure that I have that ball dipping. So the flat serve, I'm coming to the ball and opening the strings and the slice serve, I'm staying more on edge with my racket face. We pronate less prior to contact, but we still pronate fully after we make contact. Yeah. 
So racket is on edge, I make contact, and then I pronate fully. Now it's important that you're going up to your slice, not just trying to cut the side of the ball. It's a little bit of almost like a kick together with a slice, like a slick, like a, a, a spin, a top spin that has a slice element to it. And what I mean by that is you don't want to just get this side edge because the ball will rotate sideways, but it'll have nothing to pull it down. Remember when we hit forehands or backhands, the rotation forward is what brings the ball down, it's what makes the ball dip, and that's what creates angles on the court. And the same thing works on the serve, especially when we're doing a second serve where we want to get as much movement and as much width on that ball as possible. So what we want to do is we want to go up onto the ball and yes we want to hit the, the, the two o'clock or the one o'clock position but we want to start below that ball, go up, reach up to it and then across. So what happens is the ball will actually have a trajectory where it's going up, then it's bouncing and then it's going out and off the court. So you're getting that nice curve into that outside edge where the opponent will be pulled out of the court. Now the toss is very important on this slice serve. The slice serve has to be disguised. You don't want your opponent knowing that you're going for that wide ball, for that, for that angle slice. So if you're throwing the ball very far to the right, and to some of us, it actually, well, to all of us, it will feel easier to get that angle by throwing it more to the right. By throwing it there, we now can get the right side of the ball a lot easier but we're going to struggle a getting the top side of the ball and of course we're going to give away our intention of creating that slice so the better players will not vary their toss between their flat and their slice so the opponent will not know where they're going it all happens at contact when the ball is up in the air and you're reaching up for it you're either opening up the racket earlier for the flat or going through it and then opening up after contact the opponent will not know what is happening before the serve. But of course, in order to practice that and for you to feel that serve, we need to work on throwing it a little bit more to the right and get a feel for how it feels to rotate that ball, for that ball to be spinning and then bring that toss in more and more so it's more in line with your flat serve. That disguise is crucial for the effectiveness of this serve. So now for the drill, let's work on that slice serve. So for this drill, I'm going to use a different position from where I'm serving to achieve the result of my slice serve. So what I'm looking for here is the maximum angle I can get and the maximum ball rotation I can get. Now to start with, I'm gonna start right on the sideline. So the singles line being in front of me, I'm gonna serve from here and here I can actually afford to throw the ball a little bit more to my right. And I'm looking to break the sideline on the other side before it reaches the service line. Now if I can break the doubles sideline, that's even better. That's my ultimate aim. So I want the ball to break the doubles sideline before it passes the service line. So there I'm getting pretty good width, so now I can afford to stand a little bit closer in. So I'm going to go about the midway point between the single sideline and the middle, and I'm going to try and serve from there. Now I'm still looking for the same result, but now I'm looking not to throw the ball as much to my right. So I'm bringing my toss in a little bit, and I'm also bringing in my positioning. And I'm still looking to get that slice in the ball, getting that ball bouncing as wide as possible. And I've got a good marker there to see where those balls ended up, to see if I can get close to that. So I'm pretty happy with those results. Now I'm gonna go into the position of where I'd be serving that juice side serve, and I'm gonna try and recreate that again. And again, I've got the mark of those balls to see if I can make my ball reach there. And again, I'm looking to break that sideline before that service line. <laughs> Ooh. 
So there, I didn't quite get the width because my ball went a little bit deeper. So we're looking for a slightly shorter bounce to get the maximum angle. And for that, you're gonna to have to go up, drive up, and create a little bit of that topspin as well. <laughs> really happy with that one. Let's see if I can recreate it. Again, a decent serve, but something that I'll be working on further to develop that angle as much as possible. And it's a great way to practice. So look for the width first, so stand a little bit wider and throw wider, then go to the middle where you perhaps still get the angle, but then work on bringing that toss in and then from the middle, from where you'd be serving uh, into that juice side um, and try to do like a normal serve where your opponent is unable to read you. And you can do exactly the same thing on the ad side. First, you'll stand really close in to the juice to try and get as much angle as you can to the forehand side. So you'll be going for the T serve and then try and progress yourself out wide and see if you can still get that side spin, get that ball bouncing and curving in the air on that ad side. Now you can also do this for the body serve. Again, you want that ball curving as much as possible into the body of the opponent. It's exactly the same theory where the ball bounces on the, on the outside and then comes in this time to the player. Again, it's the curve of the ball and the bounce of the ball that will make that serve difficult to return. So there you have it guys, now it's time to get out there and start carving that slice serve. And don't forget, send us your best slice serves so we can feature them on our next video. Remember, it's only available to members, so join the channel first. Anyway, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment under the video, like it, and of course share it with your friends. It does help us grow. Signing off, Simon and Alex, all the best and see you soon.